What's today? September 22nd, 2021. Hello, Mr. X. Always last minute. Charlie, this one. That's how you know you're always on point when you're away. Or you could just plan in advance. I know, boys are funny. Yeah. What do you think about this, Father Lil Presti? <laughs> do you think he's crazy? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Today is the start of our new tomorrow. That's what it is. So let's do it. Let's go, guys. A lot of people may be wondering where we went why we left so suddenly, and why we went ghost. It was time to put social media, work, and quite frankly, life aside, to focus on something we tend to pray doesn't exist. We thought we could get away with keeping this a secret since it was less addressed, but what we realized was that was almost impossible. The reason it's almost impossible is because this is a huge part of our lives. It's a problem that takes a toll on both of us mentally every single day, and we're tired. We are tired of being scared of judgment. Oh, they just love the attention. Man, it's just for clout. It ain't even her story to tell. It silences you without even realizing. So we're not in a place to care what people think anymore. Because what I learned is, life is momentary. A blink of the eye. So here's the truth. I can't see. It's so hot out. It is hot out. I'm kind of living for like the San Diego vibes. It's like calm, cool, collected. We got little palm trees. When's the last time you seen palm trees? Oh, yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. I'm so excited. My cancer numbers did go up. I do have a tumor pushing up against my kidney, and very few cancer spots were found throughout my body. This nightmare won't go away, and I am tired of living like this. I always get so nervous with all the options that are offered to me in the U.S. It's either taking out different parts of my body which can change my life, or worrying about losing my hair again. It's just never good news. I got offered a second chance of life, where we're trying to find an alternative using a holistic approach in Mexico. The offer gave me hope that I had lost recently. Once you start losing hope, you realize you've become in a bad place. So we packed our bags, flew into San Diego, and drove into the Mexico border. I got blessed to have my two best friends by my side. I wouldn't have the strength if it wasn't for them. What do you feel? Sweaty. <laughs> it's very hot. I like it. I like heat. I prefer heat over cold. So you're toasty. Toasty. All right, I'm here for it. Do you feel like healthy? Yeah. Can we feel healthy, guys? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> We're learning how to eat. We're juicing. There's kale. She said mint, spinach, lemon. Lemon. Okay. So, and also, we're not gonna have coffee until 20 minutes after we eat because we your body. Like, the body needs to. Observe. The first thing you do, okay, like come on, so teach the documentary the right way. The reason why we eat first is so your body absorbs the all nutrients. the nutrients first. Yeah. The reason you don't have coffee first is because that blocks your nutrients. The, exactly, the acidity breaks down the nutrients before it even hits your stomach. Right. So this way, we're gonna. Drink. It smells good. It smells fresh. What do you this guy's suffering now. He needs coffee. He's like, dude, I'll deal with it. No one can't do it. Okay, ready, Francesco? Vlog <laughs> you. Delicious, delicious. Ah, Yeah, it's good. Very green. It tastes fresh, right? Yeah. A lot of the food that we've been eating, it makes you feel like so energized. You know, when you eat and you're just like so full, like you could tell that this is like very healthy. Think about this for a second. Yeah. Okay. Just think about it for one second. If you're eating garbage food, what are you absorbing in your body? Garbage. Garbage. So yeah, what does that do to the body? What does that do to your body? It slows you down. It doesn't allow your your body and your cells to produce like the correct things. So you become unbalanced. I haven't slept in like two fucking weeks. You okay? Mm-hmm. I want to know what's in my lower back. I mean, if there is, just take it out. Just take out whatever it is. Take it out. Take it out, take it out, take it out, take it out. It's a tired feeling. Just take it out. What's up? What are you doing here? Here. B-E-M-E-O treatment. 
What does it feel like? I don't really feel anything. No? It's just electromagnetic. It's yeah, it's like a weird thing. Mm -hmm. Good. I don't really feel too much pain in the back. Alright. My beaver's done. So this is the treatment. Put it over your stomach. It works really well. I'm breaking out. I haven't shaved. I've been nothing but a mess. I haven't been sleeping. It's been like... Months. But I haven't stopped. It feels like... Officially sleep deprived. Approximately like two weeks, a little bit over. When you hear news like that, you don't really want to do anything. Okay, so the mag array, hypothermia. For the first like week, we're gonna be doing like these pr these practices, and then they're gonna alternate it and switch it up throughout the weeks. Hurts. You look exhausted. Oh, I'm so exhausted. It's the multivitamin? Multivitamin. Multivitamin. Multivitamin going right now. <laughs> My hair breaking out. My face is like drawn in because I haven't slept in like, for like a month. I mean, wait. It's okay. I spoke to the doctor. The doctor said everything is good. Are you like stressed out? Like, how do you feel right now? I think the most stressed I've ever been was at home. Really, I stressed over here. Came here and I feel very like home, considering obviously when I first got here I was nervous, but I feel very like in good hands here. You feel very cared about here, right? I like that. Yeah. Well, I could assure you that it's definitely a beautiful place over here. It is nothing. Nothing. Nothing like what you would expect. Nothing like all those horrible stories that you hear like, oh, Tawana this, oh, Tawana that, it's a bad neighborhood. Bruh, everybody over here speaks better English than they do in Brooklyn, okay? I'm gonna be real with you. He's training us today, guys. We're gonna really maintain his healthy lifestyle. Yes. Francesco kind of slacks off at the gym sometimes, so I know one of his goals Ready? is consistency. Oh, that's good. Try. Try to clutch. Nice to meet you there, <laughs> I'm literally so happy that Francesco is working out with his dad right now. I feel like it takes a big toll on him that they never get one-on-one -on -one time together. I know his dad's always working, trying to like, support the family. This is really nice to see and I know it means a lot to him. I'm going to purposely mind my business because I want to give them that time. So I'm going to go do my abs and I know that they're going to do a lot of arm work. So I feel like Francesco's dad coming was like such a blessing in disguise because He's super distracted and like that's why we're here to be support and just grab Francesco and just keep him occupied and just happy and positive. So I'm really, really content with this. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to do my ends. You're gonna fart. I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. I got that on the vlog. She's gonna fart. I hope so. I'm not stressing it. I'm just concerned. But again, like I said, there's a lot of weight. There's a lot of weight on my shoulders. If for you, whatever, I'll do what I have to. What? But like I said, we just don't want you taking out like too much time at work. And like, and I don't want you working. Hey, my workplace, they understand. They, whatever I need, you so said, if you need anything, you call us. It's just, you know, I'm gonna figure something out. Whatever, if you wanted to stay the extra couple of days, I really think you should tell them on. Well, now we gotta switch everything. Well, flight gotta be switched. That's an easy fix. So that's gonna be switched. Switched. Gotta, you know, everything Listen, is you're meant to be here, that's why you're here. That's why you're here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and we're gonna get a nice tan on Sunday. Sunday? Yeah, dude. Well, if you stay, you get the tan with us and enjoy the day. Not even just you. Oh, we can, can get rid of these by <laughs> Yeah. Just don't worry about work. Don't worry about any of this stuff. Okay, you're here. We're here for a better reason. Maybe you're even here to help yourself find reasons to like being healthier and better. And like, that's what we're gonna do. Don't work and work your whole fucking life. Okay, don't worry about like anything else at home. I think we should try to get mom out here. We'll try. Okay. We'll try. I think that's fair. It's the try. I think so too. So we just got out of the gym. Give me this. Hold Can this. We do it? Three, two, one. Oh, 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 oh. What was that? Choking. <laughs> hey. Oh. Thank you. Oh, gracias. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Oh, that's so cute. I love it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, hey. It's the little things. Thank you so guys, much. It's the little things. Okay, come on. Always. It's so cute. Keeping the gym going. I got a little weight trainer on. I've never used one before, but I'm gonna try it. Sticking to that healthy lifestyle. <clears throat> he extended his father's flight, so he's gonna be staying an extra week. And the best part is, when we get back, what are we you gonna know what do? this is? Scorpa. No, say it again. Scorpa. Scorpa. So we're gonna be teaching my lovely half Italian woman how to play <laughs> Italian cards. And we're gonna do a little gamble, okay? Since we have all these singles and we're in Mexico. I figured maybe one of us is gonna treat someone tonight for a dinner, okay? There you go. I look crazy. Mm -hmm. Alright, what do we got here? Is this the wifey? Is this, is this wifey? This is wifey, oh my gosh, she's so hot. Okay. We're gonna, gonna get a nice workout. Be back with a pump, alright guys, check me out. I'll see you guys in like 10 minutes with a pump. Francesco has been so motivated, so just like very hyper and just like let's do it. It feels so good to see him like this because I feel like I haven't seen him pushing towards anything because I feel like the cancer takes such a toll on his energy and like who he is and even his mindset. So to see this is just insane and I'm so happy. Look at that smile. <laughs> I got him on an incline. I feel like eight. you've been very hyper. You have a lot of energy there. I feel like um the treatments that I'm undergoing are making me feel a lot better. A lot healthier. You feel better? Yes. What do you mean better? Like you feel more energized? Or you feel like in the soul? I think it has something to do with the environment. Okay. I think it has something to do with the treatments. The remedies that I'm taking, the diet especially. The diet, right? I feel like the diet is one of the most important things. Like I haven't really worked out in like a month. Right. I and mean, I really have like a pretty decent pump, you know? <laughs> and um, food is like, out of this world. It's so like natural. There's no like process. Do you feel like it makes you like happier? I feel happier. You feel happier, I feel happier right? Based on you the... look happier. Considering that like like six, seven days, like about a week ago, you know, I ended up going into the hospital and uh, I didn't really have a choice. I didn't, I didn't really have hope the way I have hope right now. Like a week ago, you would have asked me like, you know, what's your problem? Like, what are we gonna do? You know, like, how are we gonna fix your problem, Tresco? And uh, I didn't really have an answer, and I feel like a lot of my answers are coming from here. And I'm feeling like these answers, are, my questions are getting answered. Feeling anxious, nervous, somewhat hopeless, desperate. Um, not really at ease. You know, you get told news that um, you have a progressive cancer in your body that you know is leading to, to tumors and in, in, in organs that are that are pretty major, and um, how there there would be no other way basically to treat this other than chemo and surgery, like I've been told every year. Nervous is the word. Extremely nervous as I'm showing up. I do feel like at times I, I neglect my health, um, not because I choose to, but because it's like, I can't help it. I have tried over the past seven years to do multiple remedies from juices, home remedies and different alternatives and even changing my diet, keeping away from junk food, low carb intake, um, staying away from red meat and, and just trying almost everything possible. And do I necessarily neglect my health? No. I, I, I'm not neglecting it. Am I in denial about it? No. I feel like I need to find the right alternative. I don't feel like I'm finding that at home. Which is why I wanted to come out here and try to find some type of plan or some type of result better than what I'm finding at home. I know you tend to say that you don't want to deal with your health. I know you get into a lot of arguments with me or your mom because you don't want to be reminded of it. You want to feel normal. You just don't feel normal? You're around a whole bunch of people all the time and you know, nobody has your problems. Like, nobody was like 17 being told that they might not be able to have kids again or 17 years old losing all their hair and you know, I'm only like 23, about to be 24 next month and already underwent like nine different surgeries and 
you know, it's just like I have to grow up really fast, so I don't feel normal. I don't I don't feel like I fit in crowds. Like I can't go to a club and worry about like, you know, I can't even drink because I'm afraid that like that's sugar and it's gonna affect my cancer. I give me anxiety, I can't smoke, I can't drink. Like I'm not saying that these are all great habits, but you know, I know it's also a part of growing up and um, obviously it's more beneficial that I don't do these things, but just to say the average 20 year old right. kid, I feel like I can't even be normal. Like I'm afraid to go out to the club with my girlfriend and go take a shot because I'm afraid that, you know, in a week I go get a blood test and my numbers are going up. Or, yeah. or, you know, like I'm afraid to, you know, have the extra piece of like a bite of a cake because like, you know, sugar intake could really mess with your cancer. And it's just like, you know, I'm so tired of like having to watch every little thing I do. I try not to think about it because it really does uh, take a, a mental toll on me. Um, kind of like I said, it's not easy to not feel normal every day. It's not easy to, you know, go out to eat and watch everybody eat what they want and like you can't, almost like a diabetic, you know. I'm afraid to like, you know, even go to the beach sometimes because I have so many scars on my body. And working out is a struggle. Um, because every year I'm constantly like, you know, oh look, we took these things out and you're gonna do fine, like, don't worry, like, there's no more cancer in your body and like, I work out for like a whole eight, nine months, I get my body back, I, I gain like an extra 15, 10, 20 pounds, whatever it is, and then like, in exactly two weeks, you know, after those nine months, I get another operation. All that nine to a year's worth of progress is just down the drain. I feel like everything I do every day is almost a waste if I don't get rid of this problem. And it's been seven years of just like waste, I feel like. Why am I here with you in Mexico? Because you're my rock. You're, you're the reason why I, I even wanted to come here. You're the reason why like, I feel like coming here was possible. Because I'm doing it with my best friend and, you know, it's, it's like one thing to go with like your mom and your dad and like, it's another thing when you're going with like your best friend and your soulmate, like you know, reality is is I was told that like, you know, I, I might not, you know, I might need a surgery where I, I can't walk anymore and if this is the alternative and this is the last three weeks that I have with my woman, I want to spend it with her. And I wanna walk around all over Mexico with you if that's what it means. Does cancer take a toll on your mental health? in the immunity center where I'm here right now in Tijuana, Mexico because they offer alternatives, they offer they offer a chance of your body to to work through the cancer. They they work from the inside out. They want their at the immunity center that I'm going to right now, their goal is to try to make your body as healthy as possible to fight off the cancer by okay? itself your body will naturally fight off the cancer your body is amazing it is a work of art we are made in the likeness and image of god we have these type of powers to heal right you get a cut it heals you have a scar it heals and it goes away same thing with like your tooth comes out it grows back in right your, your piece of your skin comes off it grows back in Who's to say that something as small as cell deficiency, which is what cancer is, which is just cells dividing at a rapid pace that are uncontrollable. And um, your immune system, they, they bypass your immune system. That's all it is. And then they create um, these, these sacs and tumors that end up causing you lesions and problems. They believe that the best cure for your health is to <clears throat> heal from the inside out, not to destroy everything. And at the end of the day, like, people are always going to talk, like, people, nobody really understands, you know what I mean? People think they understand. Nobody, I mean, whatever, I know this is part of this, but, yeah. to say it, some people really get a step in shit to smell it, and that's just the reality, and, you know, whatever you could sensitize that, I don't want this to be PG, but, some people really have to step in it to smell it. You know, if you don't have your life on a line, 
you're getting told that you're gonna end up in a wheelchair for the rest of your life, we're gonna cut out a piece of your back and you're gonna have a plate in your back or we're gonna cut out your liver and we're gonna give you severe chemo that you're gonna lose 80% of your hearing and 25% of the people that do it lose their eyesight and you'll probably never grow your hair again, you'll hear ringing in your ears for the rest of your life. You know, these are all things that I feel like the people at home can't register because they're not going through it unless you're going through what I'm going through. Right. Do you have any advice to people at this age of smoke? Stop smoking. Especially those fucking babes. They found a small lesion by my kidneys, which, to be completely honest with you guys, I, I haven't slept in like a month. Um, even here, I have a hard time sleeping. I have a very, I have a small tumor by a, by a nerve in my back that reframes me from sleeping at nighttime because the second I lay out, the nerve is, the tumor is just pushing against my nerve and my pain goes from like a one to like a 10 and I'm, I sleep like two hours a night. It's, my face is drawn in, I haven't been sleeping. I just got operated on two times about five months ago in this area, two times in one month, two operations in one month, six months ago. I left the hospital, my numbers were at 90 my AFP levels. I come back six months later and they said, hey, listen, you still got a lot of spots over here. What's the norm number that you're- Eight to 15. And what's your number currently? So my numbers are at like 500 and like 30. And your number should be between? But my numbers should be between eight to 15. That's, That's the norm. Alpha, theta, protein. Those are the tumor count cells. So. If the norm is 8 to 15, anything over that is a problem, but it's not like when I started when I was in 2016. I started, my numbers were at like 1,600 right. AFC. So we're like in the middle. So, yeah, but the thing that concerns me though, Caitlin, is like how did I go get operated on? And I show up to the hospital six months later and I still have, well, it, it got worse. Are you nervous that where we're going is not going to work and we're just buying time that we don't have. Am I nervous that we're buying time? Am I nervous that this isn't going to work? Yes. I am on a borderline. I'm around 50-50 with this. I, I don't, I don't. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that yes, I am 100% confident that this is going to work, but from walking into that place and feeling that energy, the I feel healthier. I hear the stories of these people. I, I've heard so many great stories from the people here that how, how they put them. so many people in remission just through alternative medicines and through shock therapy and through through all these like amazing like natural things that just boost your immune system and fight cancer the way it's supposed to be fought. And for me, I'm on a fence uh, and I, I rather just put all my eggs into this basket and try before I, I give myself up to surgery and chemo. Firstly, I want to say thank you for letting me interview you and being a part of our documentary. And thank you for joining us during this trip because I feel like it was really good for all of us to have you here. I'm just glad to be here. This has been going on for a while, huh? Yes, a long time. I kind of just wanted some context from the parents' point of view or just like how it's just been on you guys since he's been 17, right? 17 yes, years old. 17. How is that like behind the scenes? Because I know you guys don't like to show him what you guys personally go through. Well, we try to keep strong. We don't want to see uh, him to see anything. But we're in, you know, for the fight from day one. And I know we're going to conquer it just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Do you and your wife, like, is it something that like runs through your head a lot? Like, do you wake up and you're like, oh, like my son's going through this? Or is it something that's more like in the norm now that it's been going on for a while? Like, is this take a toll on like your energy and you know? Yeah, at first, you know, it was a little bit hard, overwhelming. Over the years, you, you know, embrace it and try to uh, move forward the best way you can. There were certain times that here we felt like dark somewhere without any light, not knowing which way to go. You gotta keep going. You don't have a choice in these matters. 
do you ever feel like you're like in denial about this or is this something that's like very registered you understand it we're all on the same page or is this something you try to like avoid in your head now at times you try to just block it just to have some normality just a regular family day it's always part of you no matter what no matter what you turn to or what you're thinking of knowing that your child is fighting for something we try to give them as much of a normal lifestyle as we can without, without you know, knowing uh, the outcome yet. Hopefully it's a good one. But like, has cancer changed him for the worse, for the better? It has changed him. I wouldn't say for the worse, because he's always been outgoing mm -hmm. and always had a positive outlook. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if his, his schooling with Taekwondo when he was younger gave him positive thoughts towards everything. It changed him in a way that it kind of pulled him back a little bit on the reins mm -hmm. because he was, you know, an extremist in everything he did. Like he's, now he lacks motivation? No, he doesn't lack motivation, but, you know, sometimes he'll lay back and get his thoughts together, you know, move forward for the next day. Mm -hmm. Without any showing his parents any kind of... Yeah, he doesn't ever want to show you no, that. He will never show his true feelings to us. Which, you know, it's kind of the same thing. We, we wanted to give ourselves positive energy, not negativity. I feel like everybody in your household is playing this game where he's trying to show you guys, not, trying not to show you guys his emotion because he wants to make sure you guys are okay and you guys hide your emotions about it because you want to be okay for him. So everybody in his house is kind of walking and nobody really wants to touch on it. It's like a fragile it is. You know, piece of... Uh, our life structure right now. So we don't want to tee the title to the wrong yeah. side. We're trying to keep it balanced. We lean on each other without showing true emotions. Yeah. Not saying we're hiding our emotions. Right. But not to look at it in a bad point of view. You keep everybody very sane. You're like, you know, the man of the house. It's you're kind of just looking over everything. Like, how is that role? Just like being the one that's kind of like really at the end of the day, keeping everybody together. Well, it's part of being a parent and having the household, like you said. You try to keep everything stable so nothing gets thrown left or right. Of course, we have our turbulence in between. Sometimes they have, you know, heated up uh, arguments. So I'll try to take that and then try to make them understand there's always a good side to it instead of you know like putting fuel on the fire yeah i'll be, I'll be there and just like you know kind of make things simmer oh, i'll try anyway i'll give it my best so i try to be strong like you know to me to set the column to keep things even though my wife is very strong i mean she'll yeah. go through mountains or whatever you know for sure the deepest seas and all that and she's done a lot yeah, she's super passionate about yeah. this. And it's always non-stop. She keeps going. It's 24-7, and there's a lot behind the scenes that he don't see. Obviously, this was a family decision. Mm -hmm. Are you happy that we're here? We feel that we did the, the right decision, or, you know, we're hoping this is going to be the right decision. It's not wrong. So far, he's been, you know, okay with things. He's happy, he's uh, super energetic, he's got that positive outlook. Does the positive outlook on his end help you guys? Yeah, because, you know, any parent that sees their child happy makes them happy. Yeah. Is it like a good bonding experience? Are you liking it here? Happy you came? Yeah, I think it's nice, you know, because when we're back home, we have different schedules. I'm constantly working, so we kind of like have a little bit of time then he'll go out and so on. And it's just a daily routine. So when we do, like this time, it's great. You know, we're kind of growing with each other. And I'm just glad I could be here to support him. Oh, I feel like good. Yeah, like fucking the nighttime. It's always like this, man. I'm fucking tired of it. I just want to be at peace. It started hurting at dinner? Yeah. Every time at nighttime, my back just starts getting a little walky. It's like a. It's like I feel like I have something like just like poking at a nerve. I guess it's the best way I can explain it. It doesn't feel good. It keeps me up all night, but it's only at nighttime. I'm so happy yeah, today. Yeah, because you got up so abruptly at dinner. 
I was so, oh my god, I felt so good all day. I mean, you saw the way I was working out, you saw everything. And then it's like the second and night full hits, it's just like... I wonder why. I noticed that it really like, is... Hey, let's like, this should like, fuck you up, like, let's fuck you up. You know, that's what the cancer do. How do you describe the pain? It's like a... Sharp. Sharp pain, okay. Sharp, annoying, persistent, nagging, like, just fucking... Painful. It goes from like, zero to a hundred in like, two seconds. I can literally just be like this, and then I'm just up. Yeah. Because it's just like something's like I feel like I have a knife in my back. From our nutritionists and from all these doctors that we're talking to over here, and all this lovely information that we're receiving, it is good to walk right after you're done eating for at least 10 to 15 minutes. You really want to digest that food. We're trying to follow all the rules, so hopefully they work. Yes. It is going to work. If we follow, of course it is. We know it's going it's to work. It's going to 100% work. You're getting lazy on me. I'm freezing. She's freezing. They're getting lazy. Look, look. It's like they're walking down the, the red. red stairs. It is so beautiful and peaceful here. It is so amazing. Like, you guys have no idea. Yeah. Like, you literally walk out and it's just like, hello. It's like a little piazza in we've Italia. Been, we've been doing <laughs> a lot of adventures. Just random walks and just kind of enjoying the culture. It's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what the best part is? They have these coffee shops open literally all fucking day. Look. There's people still that literally, they, they still just go in. We can even get tea if you want to get tea. Yeah. You know, and just digest. It's like I'm done. You know, whatever. Things have been... I feel like everybody's just very on edge. We're all kind of eager. We want to see results. We're all kind of desperate because we're all here and we're putting all our faith into this place. And I think that in the back of our heads, we're all like, please work. I'm very confident that it's gonna work. I'm here because I believe that this is what was meant to be and he's supposed to be here. I feel like it's very normal to think of the cons and the pros and just what happens if this happens so i've been using this time while he's in treatment to really reconnect with myself there's so much going on and it really takes a toll on me and my mental health so i use the time when he is in his treatments i can't i can't be in there with him to really just recenter read books that are inspiring reconnect with myself you know really reflect and just meditate and it's really been helping at the end of the day francesco and i are only 24 years old this is just a lot more for him of course nobody wants to see someone they love go through this i know that everything looks absolutely amazing from the outside, all the activities that we get to do, the events that we get to go to, the platforms that we created, you know, everything that comes with that. It's all great, but we are missing one of the most important things, which is his health. And I feel like I'm a workaholic, grinding out on phone calls, meetings, brainstorming, coming up with new things. And I feel like that comes with, well, if we're missing health, then maybe if we keep doing so many things, it's just, gonna go away and it's gonna substitute that that pain that we feel with excitement because now we achieve something new and like nothing ever truly permanently substitutes this when we open our eyes it's there when we close our eyes it's there when we're at a restaurant and we want to eat the most unhealthiest meal and enjoy it it's on our mind when we're at a party or a club everybody's taking a shot it's on our mind when it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, the whole family, they're over and everybody's eating everything that they want. It's on our mind. Cancer brings us together. We work together. We go through this together. His problems are my problems. My problems are his problems, but it also destroys our relationship. Whenever we hear news, everybody just gets so tense and anything that anybody says, we just kind of can attack each other and just argue. We have screaming matches sometimes. And then when I scream at him, I feel terrible because I'm like, oh my God, I'm stressing him out. He can't be stressed. And I know he feels bad because he knows he's taking it out when he really feels towards the situation on me. And it just becomes really toxic and hard. We've been going through this for a really long time. Really never went away. The cancer, like we really wanted it to. Because we don't want to like depress people or come off like we're just telling sob story. 
just try to just deal with it with ourselves, but sometimes it gets too hard. I know that if Francesco wasn't going through this, we would be all over the world traveling. Him and I love to travel. We'd be in Italy, we'd be in Spain, Ibiza, Tokyo, Japan, I mean everywhere. And his dad was like, I really wish that I could switch bodies with him and I could just take his pain. Like, I wish I was the one suffering. I wish I, f I would just do anything to be the one that has cancer, pretty much, he was saying, and like, made me so sad because I know how much it takes a toll and his dad tries to be so strong for him you know his parents do but his dad told me he was like I'm a mess he's still in a lot of pain and he's still in a lot of pain that scares me I just don't want to seem like this anymore I it's really hard to watch him in pain how is it how is it? Oh, trying to basically enjoy. enjoy enjoy what? Our vacation? Our vacation? Can we, can we consider it that? Is it a vacation? <laughs> I, think, I think that on Sundays it's a vacation. It's a healthy retreat. So we're in a hot tub and then we have an appointment with the spa at 3 o'clock. We're gonna get the hot stone massage. I can't wait. And it comes with a jacuzzi and a sauna. I feel like a sauna is a really good thing for us. So, yeah. Yeah, so basically, we're gonna get pretty today. Yes, a needed day to ourselves. And then we're probably gonna go to the gym. Gym, I wanna read a little bit. A big reason why we're out here, you know, obviously, some type of alternative for what it is that I'm going through. But you know, we're also out here for a detox. I'm so tired of my girlfriend constantly feeling like she's burdened by all these people, you know? She's not a bad person, and it takes such a mental toll how so many people's like preferences and opinions could weigh in on someone's mentality. My girlfriend is, is an amazing girl, and she's here because she wants to be here for me. And she wants to help me get through whatever it is that I'm getting through, like, like a dedicated, loving, loyal girlfriend is. I can't hear her constantly call herself selfish. It bothers me because she's not. She's like the least selfish person I've probably ever met in my life. People, it's people, people who just run their mouths and you know, it's people who just want to tear people down. I don't understand like why like so many people like hate on my girl. There's nothing to hate about her. She's an amazing woman. I'm so tired of seeing her mental health like, you know, this isn't easy what I'm going through. What she has to go through isn't easy. And it doesn't help all these fucking people that are constantly like talking bad about her or making assumptions about her. She's none of those things. <laughs> what's wrong? Why don't you tell us what's wrong? What's wrong? Let's get overwhelmed. Why? What are you overwhelmed with? I just overthink. Come to me, baby. Come. Come on. Let's get away from there. I want you to take this camera and I want you to tell them. What do you What do you mean you're overwhelmed? What is going on in your head right now, baby? I just want to be a good person. You are a good person. And I'm so tired of you telling yourself that you're not a good person. What makes you say that you're not a good person? Look at how amazing you are. <laughs> Look at you. You're out here with me right now. You're here with me, right? You're here taking care of me, right? Right? Doesn't that make you a good person? Come on. Look at the impact that you have on my life. It's you having a no, little mental you're not breakdown. Fine. And it's okay. It just happens sometimes. Why don't you tell us that? Why do you feel like a bad person? I just always do. Why? Just Is it people that tell you that? Always. Well, why do you think people tell you that? I think it has something to do with maybe um, jealousy? Hmm? You ever think maybe that they're not good people, so they want to stoop you down to their level? How's no medical. Your back? My back is fine. I'm fine as long as you're. I know okay. you're fine. I just I'm I'm in Mexico too because I'm trying to like recenter myself, find myself. And, just... and I think we're doing a great job. 
we're keeping off of social media. We're not keeping in contact with anybody. Not saying that we don't want to, but it's just a good detox for our minds. It's nice to find our true selves, and if we could do that within the next three weeks here, and we bring it back home, I, we want to be able to like bring back positivity. We want to bring back hope to people who feel hopeless or people who are negative. I guess give them a brush of positivity, and. You know, if we could change, a lot of other people could change too. I just don't want you thinking you're a bad person because you're the best person ever. And not only that, but you're like the most beautiful girl in this world. <laughs> She's so Is that pretty. You made a mush? Yes, I made me a mush. Truthfully, I had like a huge debate with my family before I came to Mexico. They were just kind of like concerned about me coming. They just know I'm young, uh, we're 24, and they just felt like while he's in Mexico, I should be home and taking care of myself and, you know, like just putting myself first right now while he takes care of this with his family and like, because it, it could be overwhelming and I was like, no, 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 I have to be there, mom, dad, and grandma, aunts, you know, telling everybody I have to be there because I have to be there. Like I have, I, I, I can't like imagine tables turn and like not having somebody there for me and like I don't know I just get nervous because like I know my family's really concerned about me and like making sure I'm not losing myself and that I'm doing the right thing by myself I put a lot aside to be here I stopped all collaborations and quite frankly just stopped my life because I I'm trying so hard to do the right thing but it's just like so confusing I'm like am I doing the right thing I, I sometimes I'm like ah oh, but I know I am and I know that I'm meant to be here and I'm just happy that I am here so Get, uh, get so stressed. For a hot second. I know we should have with the camera. I wish we had a video on for following us around. This is so challenging. We are enjoying. I literally just feel so peaceful. Yeah, we are in peace. After a long week of uh, hearing bad news yeah. and like, you know, uh, traveling across the world to try to find alternatives and whatever. I think it was like, I think it was the right time to say, you know what, Caitlin, let's just, let's just chill for a day. Uh, we have a hard time sometimes um, balancing that relationship slash, you know, career life together. And I'm honestly like so happy that I was able to take her out here because this is like a our first like vacation together. Me and Caitlin. Alone. Alone, like officially. And, Usually like, we have like friends. Yeah. Like alone, like we're here, like alone. I also thought it was pretty neat how, you know, it's our first ever vacation together and like we're sitting here, we're basically both on like a retreat and we're trying to like detox and find ourselves, so. Woo! That's awesome. Cheers to that. I'll be right back. Okay. You guys are probably wondering why I decided to just like pick up and leave while they're getting ready. And I have a logical explanation for that. It's called wanting to be alone. So me and Kate had our first little fallout moment just now. I think a big reason why we came out here was to obviously figure out a solution to my problem. On top of that, we're also trying to find ourselves and give ourselves like the proper detox. You know, we're not able to give ourselves back at home. It's not easy. Kind of like stray away from social media for a while. I know that Caitlin has a hard time with that because it's it's like her life. Like, you know, she, not that it's her life, but it's her passion, it's, it's what she does. It's both of our careers and living. I do believe that it, this is a struggle and that this isn't easy. We are sitting here and like we're basically, in other words, neglecting social media and um, just kind of putting all our eggs into this basket of trying to find like inner peace. Now we had a little fallout moment because she got upset that we were in the spot. You know, she wanted me to take a picture of her and I immediately got turned off because you know, we originally said that like when we come here, we're not doing this, you know, for Instagram or TikTok reasons. We're like coming strictly here, detox from social media and to really just like, you know, find ourselves. And I got a little snippy with her and I, I feel horrible that I got snippy with her because social media is Caitlyn's escape and it's it's her way of expressing her emotions her feelings it's it's her way to keep in contact with like all of her fans and, and I feel really shitty that for a split second before I almost took that away from her and it's wrong I'm gonna be more mindful towards her and towards her feelings when it comes to social media I was always one that kind of judged her and was like, hey, listen, like, you know, social media is stupid, this, this, that, and the third, but uh, it's not. I also feel that, you know, social media does take a huge toll on 
both mine and her mentality. How we end up perceiving people, how we're looked at, how we perceive life, how we perceive just almost anything. And that, that is a little toxic, which is also why, like, you know, I keep stressing the whole idea of being here and, and keeping away from social media, which is why we made that TikTok video saying, hey guys, we'll see you in three weeks. This is purely a documentation of my journey and Caitlin's journey, my family's journey, um, a journey to hopefully finding some type of solution. And not even just for me, but for many people. I want to be able to help whoever I can. Whoever deals with what I deal with, I want to help you. I want to get you out of this drought. I want to get you out of this. Is anybody that's going to understand you? It's me. All my people who do suffer the way I suffer. I understand. I know what it's like to feel like you're a freak. You go and you hang out with all these people and everybody's just doing their own thing and like you have to watch yourself and watch what you say and like watch watch like what you eat and what you're breathing in and I guess that's just part of being healthy and normal but it'd be nice to just kind of like have people look at me and be like wow oh he's a cancer patient like instead of saying that more like oh look he's normal just like me I hate that people kind of sympathize and I don't want nobody to feel bad for me because at the end of the day like you know it's not anybody's fault not even my own fault